The riddle of the Sphinx of Giza, placed next to the pyramids like a guard dog, has not been solved since the time of the pharaohs. The particular type of headdress of the head of the Sphinx is related to the ancient sculptures of Egypt. The granite slab between its legs evokes the memory of an adventure happened to the young prince Tutmosis when, defeated by fatigue in the course of a game of hunting in the vicinity of Giza, lay down next to the Sphinx. During the dream, he heard that the Sphinx was speaking to him and asking him to remove the sand from which his statue was covered, as a reward for his services, he would obtain the throne of Egypt. Upon awakening, Tutmas hastened to remove the sand and build a wall around the Sphinx to protect it against the dunes. Shortly after he became Pharaoh Tutmos IV, 1682-1673 BC. The interest of this story lies in the fact that the Sphinx was covered in sand 37 centuries ago. This indicates that the Sphinx had a very old origin, even at that remote time. Among the ancient Egyptians the monument was designated with the name of Hu, or Protector. From those distant times, the tradition affirmed since a secret chamber existed under the Sphinx. In addition to the name of Protector, the Sphinx also bore that of Hormekit, or Horus in the horizon. Horus was a god who lived in heaven under the appearance of a hawk. Its name suggests a solution that could be related to the position occupied by the sun on the horizon, or in the zodiac. Admitting that the Sphinx has an astronomical sense, we approach a solution to the problem. Let us first consider the tradition according to which the flood devastated the world when the sun rose under the sign of Leo, in the spring equinox. The Dendera zodiac, which begins, curiously, with the sign of Leo, records the entry into a new cycle between 10,950 and 8,800 BC. A Coptic papyrus, Abu Hormes, translated into Arabic in the 9th century, specifies as follows the date of the Atlantean cataclysm, the flood was to take place when Leo's heart first entered Cancer's head. We know, on the other hand, by the wise Macrizzi, 15th century, that fire must arise from the sign of Leo and consume the world. It is from these ancient sources that the zodiac sign of Leo marked time, in the procession of the equinoxes, when Atlantis found its end and a new cycle was born. From the Book of the Dead we know that the movement of the sun in the sky was guarded by two lion gods, or Akeru, located at the doors of the morning and afternoon. With its lion body, the Sphinx looks like a guardian god, whose significance should be sought in the solar cycle, the great year of the procession of the equinoxes. The Sphinx's lion body symbolizes the Leo cycle. His head is that of a man. The zodiac contains a single male figure, that of the sign of Aquarius. It is exactly on the side opposite the sign of Leo. The message of the Sphinx is, then, from the period of Leo to the future age of Aquarius. Perhaps there is a time capsule hidden somewhere under the Sphinx and the pyramids. Herodotus tells us about a labyrinth that was under Lake Meris, near Cocodrilopolis, the city of the crocodiles. The Egyptians made the historian walk through immense constructions, but they did not allow him to see the rooms located in the basement. This prohibition is significant. Be it deposits of historical documents or graves, it is clear that Egypt had secret deposits. The Brotherhood that is said saved the papyri of the Library of Alexandria at the time of Cleopatra could still keep treasures in the Nile Valley. Masonic tradition also preserves in its rites the memory of secret caves. Rosicrucian adherents have always believed in the existence of secret deposits in Egypt. In fact, the legend regarding the opening of Christian Rosenkreutz's tomb with his perpetual lamp and secret manuscripts only corresponds to the rediscovery of an ancient time capsule. Christian Rosenkreutz is the legendary founder of the Rosicrucian order, presented in three manifests published at the beginning of the 17th century. The Druze lords of Lebanon have been guardians of their treasure for hundreds of years.